hey again, everyone. Ikelo Herod here, Future Fiction Academy here. Today, EAW will walk you through what the fine tune course, our fine tune course covers from data set creation to shaping your AI's output style. If you're wondering exactly how this course can boost your writing productivity, you're in the right place. Let's let EAW break it all down. So it's like Play-Doh. There's only so much in the container, but you can use a tool and you can make it into different shapes than just your hands. So when, this is why you wanna make a fine tune your own. Um, the fine tune makes no permanent change to the core training of the model. So when you fine tune uh, ChatGPT 4.0, you're not changing core 4.0. It's, it's your personal fine tune. You can't add or subtract Play-Doh that's in the set. You just have the Play-Doh that's in the bucket. Each time the LLMs get bigger, we get more colors and bigger containers of Play-Doh to play with. We saw that in the tokens. Um, Liz is 159,136. If I go to GPT 3.5, it's got to be broken up into two tokens. The more tokens you break up a, a word into, the more likely confusion and hallucinations are going to happen versus if you have a concept that's only one token. So each time they get bigger, we get more colors and the bigger containers of Play-Doh to play with. Now, what's an overfit? When you try to do too much and you turn all those colors into that terrible brown color, you know what brown color I'm talking about. When you take all the Play-Doh colors and you mix them into one color and you can't unmix them and it's just broken. You can't get the pretty individual Play-Doh colors anymore, um, or in the case of an LLM, other functionality. So why do we use strange, weird names like Outline Mageddon? Well, because if it's tokens, you know, if there's not something for the name of what we're doing, when we're giving it these like unique, weird names like Outline Mageddon or Be Marketing, Marketing Mark, we are helping the LLM kind of create a new kind of relationship between those, that set of tokens and um, these tokens um, otherwise, because these words are made up of other words. So like if I was to look at the token for outline, for example, outline is one token inside of GPT-40 and 40 mini. If I was to look at GPT-3.5, it's, it's still one token, but it's higher. Um, Let's see what happens when I do novel outline. Now that I have novel outline, um, 301 is just a space. Here, spaces no longer have a, um, have a token. So it's just 184,211 and 84714. I think that is a different number. Oh, okay, it's the same number. Okay, so that's good. Um, there is a case where tokens do change numbers. I'm getting in the weeds on this. The point is, is that we have found success doing these kinds of things. You don't have to, but when we put it in the system prompt, it just kind of helps the AI to understand exactly what we're doing and send that signal in the system prompt. So the specific sequence of tokens is part of the rearrangement of other tokens inside the LLM to rearrange them to be closer or farther away from other tokens in the data set. So a fine tune is we rearrange the furniture and that rearrangement had to involve those specific token sequences that were repeatedly in the training data set. This is how you can get she bit her lip, she bit her lip, she bit her lip, or Willow Creek. If you have that too often in the data set, you have rearranged that furniture to the front of the room. And of course, that's going to be the first chair that the LLM tries to have you sit in. Since these main sequences are gibberish, unlikely to be in a ton of other training, we're helping the LLM recognize right away how we want the furniture rearranged of some tokens and not all tokens in the LLM. But we do not literally write new tokens to the LLM. We only rearrange the tokens inside to change their address in relation to other tokens in the vector field. So last little visual aid, if you're imagining this vector field as a bunch of metal bits and screws that were living on a place on a table and you drop a magnet, like a fine tune, you'll see that some of the magnets and screws sucked right to the magnet, but other ones that the data set, or in this case, the magnet had nothing to do with, they're gonna stay where they are. So if they're not affected by the magnet, then they won't move. This is literally what a fine tune does. So. A fine tune changes how the existing tokens in the training data set relate to one another in small fine tune amounts. Um, so you got through it. Congratulations. Hopefully there was enough 
education about what it is and what we're doing and why this is going to allow the AI to talk like you. So some questions that will help you think um, so how a fine tune will help you. So I want you to start thinking these questions, take some time to jot them down before you go through the rest of the modules, because this is going to help you understand this and get proficient at fine tunes a lot faster. What kind of consistent response style do you want from the LLM? One of the biggest things I hear is I wanted to write longer or I only wanted to write 400 words. I, you know, length is a really big thing for authors. Um, having a fine tuned data set that consistently shows an output of the length that you want the LLM to do will help it at least hit that length. You may not like all the words, but it'll at least hit that length. What kinds of prompts, system, and user will you be routine, routinely using in hopes of getting this response? If you're someone who prompts on the fly, you know, you're a pantser or whatever, take a look at your old conversation. See if you're you're constantly saying, can you expand that? Can you make that longer? Um, you can you can add that to the first prompt in a conversation chain and then like give that second answer that you did in the prompt chain as the first answer in your fine tune. So that way the LLM skips doing that first bad answer and just kind of skips to that good second answer. Also, why do why um why does the current baseline prompt fall flat? Have you exhausted tricks of prompt engineering like changing your hyperparameters, that's that temperature and stuff, styles of prompting such as chain of thought? In other words, have you have you moved beyond just basic prompting of like, write me a book? Are you actually giving like very detailed prompts that you know sometimes work for you, sometimes don't, and you just want it to be consistent? And then the biggest one of all is like, how will the fine tune be a win? And what I mean by this is like, for example, I was very happy when I got 3.5, 16K to consistently write me 2000 words. That was a win. I didn't even care if they were wonderful words or not, but it actually, my fine tune of 3.5, 16K immediately brought dialogue in because that's not how 3.516K used to write. You used to always not write dialogue. You'd have to put that in on the second response. And it actually wrote me 2000 words um, in a response. Like it would actually write 1500 to 2000 in, the, in a go. Those were the win conditions. So think about your win conditions for your fine tune. Um, that way, if you get stuck or you have questions, you can always email us at dean at um, futurefictionacademy.com or ask a question in our discord. Um, because if you can understand your win condition, then we can help you troubleshoot and figure out what's the best data set for you or the best model or something like that, or if a fine tune is not going to be able to solve your problem. But if you can't clearly communicate what's wrong and what you want in a fine tune, you're never going to be satisfied with your fine tune. You're just going to be like, well, it kind of feels like it's better, but maybe not. So make sure you have that win condition. All right. And uh, good luck with your next class and we'll see you guys around. Bye. Sorry, Stacy. Okay, I know that was a lot of comfort, a lot of information, and we took some field trips. Um, but you now know what a fine tune is. Okay, you have the same knowledge of fine tuning that I had to go procure for myself in 2023, and so did all the other founders of the FFA. So you're armed and you're dangerous. Um, if you think you can just from that learn, Dino Trainer is available. Uh, if you want more guidance, then I recommend you purchase the fine tune class because we're going to teach it all to you. If you got a little glimmer of that, like, oh, wait, I understand this. Oh, I understand this. Okay, I want to make the AI write like me. This is the class for you. And like I said, we're going to give you nine data sets. Um, I really do think that this is the future. We have automated books now with AI. We've gotten there. We have the easy peasy book machine. Everybody has that from last year where you can just say, make a plan, write, edit, make a final. Pairing that with a fine tune is the secret sauce that makes it so that what the AI writes out is yours. It's you. It's people not even reading that and going, I think this is AI. No, I think that's EAW. Um, so fine tunes are definitely a big component of the future. It's also going to help future proof your career because if you're writing with AI with a fine tune, your writing is not going to look like AI. The common phrases that people are going to spot of like, I can already tell you, oh, one preview constantly says flattery will get you nowhere. Every single book I run with it in different genres, it has worked that line in. Willow Creek, because there was a bunch of Willow Creeks inside. And now we see a lot of books in um, the Amazon store with Willow Creek, like exponentially gone up it's because the AI rehashes a lot of these tokens that have ha too high attention. If you're tired of seeing the names Elena and Ilara and, um, oh gosh, Jake, 
oh gosh, 3.516K, every male lead was a Jake. Um, these are the things that a fine tune can cure. So uh, good luck with the rest of the class. If you need any help, just holler. Hopefully you're feeling inspired by that sneak peek into our fine tune course. Be sure to visit thefuturefictionacademy.com to see all of our classes and they, they're all visible and available there. And remember that the fine tune course is launching in just a few weeks with a trove of data sets and step-by-step -step demos. Like, subscribe, and tap that notification bell to stay in the loop. And remember, if you don't do it, YouTube's gonna YouTube. I'm Mikel O'Hara, and this is the Future Fiction Academy, and I, I'll see you in class.